So, dear brothers, we thank our Lord for giving yet another opportunity to spend some time to discuss His wonderful words of life. So, from last few weeks, uh, we have been studying about the subject of the Lord's uh, second coming. So, almost we have seen uh, the main chronological part of it, how that our uh, Lord uh, returned invisibly to this earth uh, atmosphere uh, since uh, 1874. And since 1874, uh, He has been uh, ruling uh, in the uh, see earth uh, atmosphere uh, invisibly. So, now the next question that naturally comes to our mind is that, uh, about a rapture. Because there are many scriptures uh, which tell that uh, as soon as, uh, you see, uh, Jesus uh, returns, uh, the church uh, should uh, rule uh, with our Lord and uh, the church should be, you see, uh, raptured, uh, uh, you see, dear brethren. Therefore, today we're going to take some time and see what does the uh, Bible say about uh, rapture. So let us read, uh, uh, Gopal brother, uh, can you read First Thessalonians? 4, 16, 17. Okay, I think your voice is very low. Now, okay, brother. But quite better. Okay. First Thessalonians 4, 16. Yeah, For 16 the Lord. Okay, brother. For okay. the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Very good. So this verse clearly says that as the Lord returns with the sound of an archangel and the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And the next verse it says that the day that are which alive, they, say they shall be caught up together with the Lord in the air and they shall reign with the Lord and be with the Lord forever and ever. So it says they shall be caught up together to the Lord in the air. That means so the dead in Christ shall be raised first and those that are alive at the presence of our Lord, they shall be what happened? They shall be caught up, you see, uh, with the Lord uh, in the air. Okay, so this is one of the verse. There is other verse uh, that is Luke 17, chapter 34 to 37, brother. Luke 17, chapter verse 34 to 37. Mm. Uh, Gopal, brother, you are there? All the verses you need to read. Okay, brother. Okay. Luke 17, verse 32 to 37. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and, and said unto him, Where, well, Lord? And he said unto them, uh, wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Very good. So, here also, if you see in Luke 17, chapter, it says, In those days, uh, you see, in that day, yeah, there shall be two who are, uh, you see, on uh, the uh, grinding, and uh, one will be taken, other will be left, it seems. There will be two persons in the field. One will be taken and other be left. Also, it says there will be two person on the bed. One will be taken, other be left. So, you see, dear brethren, so here it clearly says that two person will be there. One person will be taken, another person will be left. Dear brethren, so everybody thinks that uh, during the day of the rapture, what will happen? One person, you see, will be taken, other will be left. So, who is that one person? If you see the faithful Christians are. You see, as they are living in this world, as soon as Jesus comes with a trump of God and with the voice of an archangel, what will happen? Immediately, the Christians will be taken up like that only and in front of their eyes, one person will be taken, other person will be left at himself. Dear brethren, just uh, imagine if uh, uh, two people are uh, going on a bike and the driver uh, is a Christian and if he is taken, what about the condition of the people 
a person who was sitting back up, the unbeliever. So he will just uh, fall, I pray for the accident. So, and uh, moreover, uh, this is okay. Uh, at least uh, imagine if uh, uh, in the plane, a pilot is a Christian and suddenly he is taken off during the time of rapture. What about all the persons in the uh, aeroplane? Uh, so what will happen to them? See, dear brethren, many people think that uh, this is how it is going to happen. One person will be taken up, other person will be left. Let us read one more scripture. That is First uh, Corinthians 15, chapter 51 and 52, brother. First Corinthians 15, chapter 51 and 52. Behold, I see you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Very good. So it says, uh, we shall all uh, not uh, sleep. Uh, we shall be changed. So when, if you say we shall be changed, in a twinkling of an eye, you see, when the last trumpet shall sound, uh, we shall all be raised, uh, and we shall be changed. Uh, how? Within a twinkling of an eye. Therefore, everybody uh, believes that uh, as soon as uh, Jesus comes with a sound of a trump, a trumpet sound, what will happen? The dead in Christ shall rise first, uh, and we which are alive, you see, we shall be changed within a twinkling of an eye, within a fraction of a second, immediately will be changed and taken to heaven. Dear brethren, you see that uh, can uh, we go literally in this body to heaven? What does the Bible say? Can we go to heaven? Can we go to earth, uh, beyond the earth atmosphere in this flesh body? No. See, verse 50, brother. First Corinthians 15, 50, brother. Uh. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, neither hmm. neither God corruptions inherit in corruption. Uh, see, the Bible clearly says that uh, uh, flesh and blood uh, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So, in this flesh and blood, in this fleshly body, we can't go to heaven. Uh, then, how do we need to go? Dear brethren, we need to put off this body here itself. Uh, we need to take up and put on the spiritual body. Then only can we go to heaven. How did our Lord go? Did our Lord go to heaven in the same fleshly body? No. He put off this uh, fleshly body and uh, he put on the spiritual body. And in this spiritual body, he went to heaven. Brethren, and no, none can go to heaven just like that, uh, just uh, by changing uh, your brain. We need to lay off all our earthly things, even our body. We need to leave it here, dear brother. Then only we can go to to see heaven. So many people think that uh, uh, when uh, Jesus comes, uh, what will happen? Uh, many Christians will be transformed immediately, even without seeing death. Without seeing that, immediately they will be, you see, transformed and uh, they will be taken uh, and rapture. Uh, you see, dear brother. But uh, what does the Bible say? Can we go to heaven without proving to our Lord our faithfulness unto death? No. We can never receive the reward until we have proved our faithfulness till death. Let us read Revelation 2.10 with Revelation 2.10. Revelation 2.10. Fear not of those things which shall, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. But thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Uh, see what does that verse say? Huh? It says, "Be thou faithful unto death; I will give thee the crown of life." So. Our responsibility is to be faithful to God until when? Until death. Not until for a few days, sir. It is until death. God is going to test us until death uh, whether we are going to prove faithfulness or not. How did Jesus go to heaven? He proved his faithfulness until death on the cross. So similarly, each and every person who has to attain the heavenly salvation, they have to prove their faithfulness until death. Then what is the meaning of 1 Corinthians 15 chapter 
51st verse where it says, uh, Behold, I tell you a mystery. Hmm? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. What is the meaning of this one? Everybody thinks that uh, we shall not all sleep means uh, Jesus is uh, Apostle Paul is speaking uh, about the uh, sleep of uh, yeah, death. No, no, no. Apostle Paul is not uh, speaking about the death, about the last moment uh, where we lose our breath. He is not speaking about that death at all here. Why? Because uh, uh, we need to see what is the meaning of sleep, uh, which Apostle Paul mentions here in this verse. You see, we have studied uh, the Bible for so many you see, months together. And we have come to know that how do we study the Bible? Here a little? Hmm. There a little. Very good. Here a little, there it is. Search the scriptures for the Bible, which is the dictionary, brother. Bible, yes. So any doubts in the Bible, we need to search for the Bible. So what is the meaning of sleep in the Bible? You see, we all remember very well that uh, uh, Lazarus was dead. Uh, but uh, the news uh, came to Jesus saying that Lazarus is very sick. And what did Jesus say? Uh, he said, Lazarus sleeps. Lazarus is doing what? Uh, he is sleeping. Immediately, the disciples tell him, oh, Lord, it's good no, that Lazarus is sleeping. Uh, that uh, he might become uh, well very soon. But what did Jesus say then? then? Jesus said, no, Lazarus is dead. So let us read John 11 chapter. Brother. John 11 verse 12. John 11 verses from 11 to 14. John 11, 11 to 14. Brother. This thing said he, and after that he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said he his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking up rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Okay. Lazarus is dead. So, what was actually Jesus telling? If you see, Jesus was not telling about the moment of death. He was telling about the condition of dead. There's a lot of difference between the moment you die and after you die, remain in the dead condition. So, to remain in the dead condition, the Bible compares that one to the sleep. That's what uh, Lazarus was dead. When the news came to Jesus, Lazarus was already dead. And he compared that death condition to sleep. That's what Jesus said. Lazarus sleep. You see, I may go that I may wake him from the dead. So similarly, when Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, he says, we shall not all sleep. Then what does he mean? Does he mean that we shall not all die? No, no, no. He says, we will all die, but we will not all sleep in death condition forever and ever. No, the church will not be sleeping in the death condition. Why? Because there will be some part of the church who will be living during the presence of our Lord. And all the faithful Christians from the first advent of Jesus till the second advent of Jesus, they all died, they all rested, they all slept in death condition, waiting for the second coming of our Lord Jesus. As soon as our Lord Jesus came, the trump, you see, with the sound of archangel, what did he do? He rose all the dead in Christ first. So, since 1874, when our Lord returned, you see, the first thing our Lord did was to gather his saints to him. So, in 1878, all the dead saints, that means from the apostles, in 1874, who were all faithful, 
all the saints were sleeping in death condition, waiting for the Lord's second coming. As soon as Jesus came, he first resurrected these people. Then what happened? But then they were also few Christians, few faithful ones who are still living in the day of the Lord. That is during the, you see, seventh uh, church period, seventh trumpet. Therefore, if you see, uh, this verse, what does it say? That the dead in Christ shall rise first when? During the last trump. During the, Jesus shall return with the trump of God. You know, tell me, how many trumpets are there in the Bible? If you see, in the book of Revelation, there are actually seven trumpets. To the seven churches, the Bible tells about the seven trumpets. So, when Jesus is going to return, see, when uh, Revelation 3rd chapter, Revelation 3rd chapter, uh, when Jesus uh, is speaking about the 6th church, how does it tell to the church? Revelation 3, Revelation 3, 11, brother. Uh. Revelation 3, 11. Mm. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast uh, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. See, I come quickly. So in the sixth church period, Jesus was not yet come. He said, I'm going to come very quickly. But before this one, you see, he said, I will come. I will come very soon. I will come like a thief. That's what uh, Jesus said in Revelation 3rd chapter. Was that? Revelation 3. Huh? Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief mm. and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. See? He said for the let's say fifth church, I will come very huh, like a thief. But for the sixth church, he said, I will come very quickly. But for seven church, what did Jesus say? Read Revelation 3rd chapter verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he will with me. Ah, see, at the seventh church period, Jesus is already standing at the door and knocking. That means he already returned. So, we also read seven trumpets. You see? And the seven angels sounding seven trumpets. See, what happens when the seventh angel sounded? Read, when the seventh trumpet sounded, what happened? Revelation 11 chapter, verse 15. Revelation 11 chapter, verse 15, brother. Huh? And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Uh, you see, what happened when the seventh trumpet sounded? See, this is the last trumpet. As soon as this last trumpet sounded, what happened? Immediately, the kingdoms of this world, you see, which was uh, under the control of the adversary for 6,000 years, was immediately transferred to whom? Was immediately transferred to our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, of his Christ means, Christ means anointed ones to the church. So as soon as Jesus returned, what happened? Uh, the kingdom was transferred to Lord Jesus Christ and the resurrected church. Now, uh, who is actually ruling, if you see, it is our Lord Jesus Christ who is ruling at the seventh trumpet. So, the seventh trumpet is the last trumpet. Therefore, it says in 1st Thessalonians 4.16, when Jesus comes with the trumpet, what will happen? The dead in Christ shall rise first. Next, we which are alive, the saints who are living alive during the second presence of the Lord, as and then they finish their course, they will immediately be resurrected in the first resurrection. Instead of Waiting instead of uh, sleeping in death condition and waiting for the returned Lord, they will already, you see, be raised uh, 
immediately as soon as they die. Why? Because earlier apostles and all waited for the Lord's second presence. But as we are living in the day of the Lord, as soon as we die, immediately, if we are of the faithful class, within the twinkling of an eye, the Lord would give us a spiritual body, the divine nature. And in this divine nature, we will join the Lord to rule with him in the air. That's what the Bible says. See, let us read now this verse again, brother. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter verse 51 and 52, brother. Now, now read, brother. Behold, I see you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Uh, at the last trump. When this change shall happen, it will be at the last trump. That is the last trumpet when Jesus has already returned. So we shall not all sleep in death condition, but we will die. And what will happen as soon as we die? We shall be changed. And how this change will happen from the uh, fleshly nature to the spiritual nature? It will be so quick that it will be within the twinkling of an eye. So within the twinkling of an eye, so fast, what will happen? We will leave this body. We will die like normal human being. But immediately, God would have given this faithful church, the spiritual body, to rule with the Lord invisibly. Therefore, next verse, what does it continue? It continues to say, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. See, the dead shall be raised, not the living one shall be raised. That means they have to die. Hmm? The dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. See, so this change of nature is called uh, the uh, putting off this fleshly body and putting on the spiritual body. And this will happen only since the uh, Lord's second presence. Therefore, you see in the Bible, uh, the death uh, is compared to a very blessed thing. You see, Revelation 14, 13. It is applicable only to the living saints who are living since 1878. Read, brother. Revelation 14, 13. Hmm. Hmm. And, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. See, what does it say? He came a voice from heaven saying, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Can the death be called blessedness? Yes, it is a blessedness only to one class of people. Which is that one? A little flock. Because they are eagerly waiting to die. Why? As soon as they die, what, what, what reward they will get? They will get the reward to rule with our Lord for a thousand years. This ruling with our Lord, the most blessed thing. Therefore, what did we read in Daniel 12, 13? Huh? Fold your hand like this. We'll come again. Read the, now Daniel 12, 13. Brother. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. 13, 13, 1, 3, 12, 13. Yes, brother, 12, 13. Are you reading 12, 13? One yes. minute. Daniel. Daniel 12, chapter. No? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Then 12, verse, sorry. Ah, 12th verse. Okay, brother. Blessed is he that waited and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Ah, blessed is he that waited for a thousand thirty five days. What is the blessedness? This is the blessedness. Blessed is the person who waited for a thousand three thirty five days means blessed is the person that waited till 1874 because as soon as 1874 comes, immediately our Lord would have returned and immediately resurrect, rise his jewels, the church, and he shall gather them. Therefore, he says in Revelation 14, 13, Blessed are the dead 
Imagine, blessed are the already dead Chinsa, who die in the Lord and support Chinsa. Who are these dead? Da? The dead, we are all dead to the world. If we remain faithful to the Lord, we are covenanted with the Lord, that means we are covenanted that we are going to die for the world. These are the dead Christians who are dead to the world, who actually die in their flesh. You see, from when? Not from every time. It says, from henceforth. There is a particular period which this verse is applicable. Now, what is the period? If you read Revelation 14.8, read Revelation 14.8, what does it say? And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fa fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations dr drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Uh, it says, uh, Babylon is fallen, fallen. Since that period, since that period of what? Babylon is fallen. This verse is applicable. Therefore, it says, henceforth, after the fall of Babylon, henceforth, those whosoever die in the Lord, huh? what will happen now? It is a most blessed thing. What is the most blessed thing? Hmm? Continue, brother. Revelation 14, 13. What happens? It seems. Next, continue. Hmm. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And that they may rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. What is the meaning of this one? Huh? That they may rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. See, as we are in the flesh, what is there for us? Uh, daily tiredness is there. You see, daily weariness is there. You see, as we are in the flesh, we have got so much of obligations. You see? But once we die, huh? what will happen now? Huh? We rest from all these fleshly labors. But uh, as we are resurrected on the other side of the veil in the spiritual body, what will happen? The works follow us. The same work what we are doing now, harvesting the Lord's flock from the Babylon. This work, the Lord's faithful one shall continue with the Lord on the other side of the will. So, this is the blessedness, dear brethren. Therefore, uh, if you see in the Bible, you see in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, it is actually speaking about the actual death and after death uh, getting changed into the spiritual body. So, nowhere does the Bible say about the rapture, if anybody has to be uh, faithful to the Lord, they have to prove their faithfulness only until death, then only can be given a heavenly salvation. Now, okay. Now, then what is the meaning of Luke 17, chapter 34 to 37, where Jesus said, uh, see, in that day, two shall be uh, grinding and one shall be taken, other shall be left. Then, it also says that uh, two uh, shall be uh, on one bed and one shall be taken, another left, and two shall be in the field, one shall be taken, another left. What is the meaning of that one, brother? brother? Well, that was clearly says, now one shall be taken, another left. So rapture is there, no, brother? Huh? Everybody thinks that uh, this verse is speaking about rapture. Correct, no? Now, let us uh, read the verse again, slowly. Huh? Read, brother. Luke 17, chapter 34 to 37. Please read it again. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Ah, okay. Now, if you observe all these verses, Jesus said, one shall be taken, other left. Now, did uh, Jesus say huh, in those verses that they shall be taken up? Did Jesus say that they shall be taken up? No. Jesus said they shall be taken. No, taken means they can be taken anyway, no? Any direction. They could be taken in the left direction. They could be taken in the right direction. Huh? But why you uh, come to a conclusion that they should be taken up to heavenwards? Huh? We get doubt, no? 
the same doubt the disciples also got they questioned the lord where lord where are they taken you see the strange answer of our lord read verse 37 brother ha huh? and they answered and said unto him where lord and he said unto them wheresoever the body is is thither will the angels be gathered together eagles be gathered together ah what did jesus reply disciples asked where lord where are they taken please tell us clearly no what did jesus say instead of telling that they have been taken to heaven that was a easy answer no don't don't you know they are taken to heaven very clear simple answer every chapter would have been closed but instead of saying that one what did jesus say where so over the body is there the eagles will gather so just because he is is just because eagle is mentioned everybody thinks that uh, oh, eagle will be flying high, so they will all be taken up to heaven I mean the sky no no kindly observe that verse it says where the dead body is there the eagles will gather it never says that uh, you see where the eagles are there the dead bodies will gather no no it doesn't say like that everybody thinks the wrong way everybody thinks that the eagle is there everybody all the dead bodies will gather to the eagle in up in the sky in heaven no this verse says where the eagles are ha huh? what is it say where the dead bodies are there the eagles will gather so you tell me where will the dead body be will it be on the ground or will it be in the sky it will be on the ground so where are the eagles eagles are flying high in the sky from that height they see this dead body why because this dead body has got blood and it is its food to take that food the eagle will take heavy risk and travel from long distance to see and come and take that uh, huh? dead body that is what jesus is saying where will they be taken lord huh? understand where the dead bodies are there on the ground there the eagles will come jesus is not taking speaking about uh, taking the people to heaven or rather he is saying the other uh, way around where the people are being gathered to have meat you see to have dead bodies uh, now what is the meaning of uh, uh, this uh, uh, eagle and what is the meaning of this dead body read job 39 29 and 30 brother job 39 chapter 29 and 30 brother job 29 39 chapter verse 29 and 30 from then she speaketh the prey and her eyes behold afar off her young ones also suck up blood and where the slain are there is she ah where the slain are there is she this is the same verse jesus spoke here now where is the dead body on the ground where is the eagle it makes the next on the mountain from there it comes down to pick up the food it seems so jesus is speaking about you see eating food okay so oh, what is the meaning of eagle in the bible we remember a verse now isaiah 40 30 and 31 they that wait upon the lord hmm over there this shall fly like an eagle very good brother they that wait upon the lord shall fly high like a eagle they shall mount their wings upon the sky so the eagle in the bible means the faithful church where are they flying they are not sticking to the ground like a snake they are not the people of the devil they are god's children they are flying very high in the sky highest flying bird 
is the eagle. You see? So, eagle, what does it do? Fly from where? From the top? From such a high place, it can see everything at a time. It can see through two or three streets together at a time. What is happening everywhere? You see, we can see from the eagle's eye point. So this is actually speaking about the church. The church having so sharp eyesight. Eyes means what? Wisdom. You see? Eyes of understanding. These are the people who are eagerly waiting for what? For food. If you put a huh, nice uh, vegetable curry, huh, the eagle doesn't come. But if you put one chicken piece, what will happen? If you don't know from where it will come, suddenly it will come flying and touch. Immediately in seconds it will take it off. Similarly, God's true children are the people who are waiting for meat in due season. So, here, what does Jesus say? You see, this is actually speaking about the faithful church seeking for strong food. That's what he is giving three types of examples. First example, what does he say? He says, in that night, two men shall be in one bed. One shall be taken, other left. Now, what is his meaning of bed? Hmm? Bed means what in the Bible? See, blood, bed actually is a place of rest. If you are very tired, if you come to the house and sleep on the bed, you get good sleep. Super relaxed, no? Huh? So, actually, what is the meaning of bed in the Bible? If you see, bed in the Bible means rest in faith. Our place of resting in faith is called as bed in the Bible. Uh, understood? Huh? Now, each and every person in this world are sleeping in a bed. Some people are sleeping in a Roman Catholic bed. Some people are sleeping in a Methodist bed. Some people are sleeping in a Pentecostal bed. Still some people in CSI, etc., etc., etc. So, they are sleeping comfortably there. But as they are sleeping, not everybody, one among the two, is, he, he won't get that rest in the bed. Suddenly what will happen? Huh? He will start growing. He will grow spiritually. Day by day he will start growing. Become a matured Christian. Then that bed is not sufficient for that person to sleep. Why? He is stretching. And that bed is not huh, comfortable enough to sleep. Then what happens? He seeks other bed for rest. Huh? Other bed means what? He seeks for strong spiritual food like an eagle. Hmm? And among the two people, one who wants to grow more will be taken from that restless condition of doubt and questions and confusion and bring him to the desired rest where meat in due season is given. He comes like searching for an eagle, you see, for a meat. Uh, and as soon as he gets the meat, he stays there. That's what Jesus is saying. Uh, they shall be taken where? Where the dead bodies are, they shall be taken there. Dead body is the meat and the food for this uh, uh, eagle. So, so this uh, uh, bed uh, is actually faith. Read Isaiah 28, 20. Brother. Isaiah 28, 20. <clears throat> Isaiah 28, 20. Mm. So the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. Good. Okay, good brother. Gopal brother, can you read once more if you don't mind? Sure brother. Mm. For the bed is shorter ah. than See, that. the bed is shorter than hmm. That a man can stretch himself. Ah, than a man can stretch himself. That means what? Da? A bed. Da. Does the bed size increase? No, no, no. See, when you are born, we will be put in a small bed. Huh? Our uh, parents will put in a small bed. No? But uh, as we are growing, will the bed also grow? Uh? No, bed will remain the same. So, what does he say? Huh? What does he say, brother? Bed? Huh? 
that a man can stretch himself on it. So bed is shorter. Bed is narrower. So bed is not sufficient. Why? Suddenly what happened to the bed? Bed is like that only. A bed doesn't change at all. That means what? That means the condition of faith among Christianity. They have their own creed. They have their own customs. They tell now, if you go and tell the truth to these people, what do they say? No, no, no. Our faith is there. Our creed is there. We should be like this only. If you go and tell to a Roman Catholic, we should not do idol worship. Will they listen? No, no, pa. You, our father tells. Then if you go and tell to a Pentecost, no, speaking in tongues is wrong in the Bible. Actually, tongues is understandable language. Will they listen? No, no. This is a sign of the Holy Spirit. They will tell. Why? That bed is fixed. There is a boundary for the bed. You can't cross the bed. If you want to cross, you can't stay in the bed. Imagine if you travel in the rail, rail, you see, it has got a fixed space for bed. Huh? So if you are, uh, uh, if you can stretch your leg, what will happen? No, it will come out of the bed. So you can't sleep comfortably. If you say, no, okay, I'll adjust and sleep, what to do, and fold your leg and sleep. Can you sleep comfortably? You won't get sleep. Similarly, it is the condition of this faith. You will try to adjust with a Pentecostal denomination, with a Roman Catholic denomination, with a CSM, Methodist, Presbyterian, everything. We can't sleep. We can't sleep in peace, in faith on the Lord. Why? Lot of confusion. Hell, soul, huh? Trinity, huh? Etc., etc., all the doctrines are false. So, the real Christian never feels satisfied to sleep in that bed. Continue with the Isaiah 28 20. Continue. Huh? And the covering narrower than that, he can wrap himself in it. Uh, and the covering narrower than that, he can wrap himself in it. Covering means what? Huh? As we are growing, we get so many doubts. No? We will go and ask our pastor. Uh, pastor. Father, uh, brother, uh, these questions are there. Uh, please uh, clarify to us. No? If you go and say, they will tell, no, mm -hmm. never ask questions to God. Uh, they will give some other answers and all, which are not scriptural at all. This is the bed sheet they give. But that bed sheet is very quite very small. It doesn't fit our faith. It doesn't satisfy us. You see, it doesn't cover the entire question. Then what will happen? Huh? If we take a five foot bed sheet for a six feet person, can he sleep comfortably? If he covers the legs, it will be open. If he covers the head, the leg will be open. Uncomfortable. Your mosquito will bite cold. Then what will happen? If he tries to fold himself, squeeze himself, and cover in this bed sheet, how longer can he sleep? He can't sleep. Then what will happen? He decides to leave this bed. That is the true bed, you see, the Lord gives. For the persons who are searching for the truth like an eagle, God brings them to the desired meat in due season. You see, Lord has returned as the second coming. Now, what is he giving us? Read Revelation 3.20. Read Revelation 3.20 and Matthew 24. Hmm. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Uh, Jesus will sup with uh, us with him and we with him with him. Now imagine if Jesus comes, uh, what type of food will he bring to us? Jesus is coming to this earth after how many years? Tell me. After how many years has Jesus returned? Nearly 3,000. How many years? Approximately tell me. No problem. 3,000 years. 2,000, 3,000 years. Imagine if you go to some place, after 2,000 years, if you return, will you come empty-handed? Will we come empty-handed? If you go to station, if we return to our home, after one or two months, we won't come empty-handed. Imagine the Lord has returned seeking his bride. 
who has been waiting faithfully for 2000 years what type of food they will bring you know what type of food they will bring read luke 12 chapter luke 12 luke 12 37. will do? Lord himself shall cook food it seems for us. And he will gird himself like a servant and serve us food it seems. What type of food? Pure vegetarian. He says, he shall sit down to meat. Meat means what? Vegetarian or non-vegetarian? Tell me. Meat means what? Non-vegetarian. Non-vegetarian. See? Yeah. When Jesus was resurrected, all the disciples went fishing. Jesus came on the seashore. Huh? Everybody came to meet Jesus. What had Jesus prepared? Tell me, what food he had prepared? Fish. Fish. Uh, non-veg. Uh, he likes non-veg very much. <laughs> so, non-vegetarian means meat. Strong spiritual food. This is the meat the eagle is desiring. This is the meat our Lord at his return is giving to the faithful church. Read same chapter verse 42. Same chapter verse 42. Hmm. The Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Okay. Meat in due season. At the second advent, he has appointed him. You see, a faithful servant through whom he will be giving to his household, the church, meat in due season. You'll see all these things in the coming days. But the meat in due season is a strong spiritual food. See, we have studied about how to study the Bible. Ransom, three world, three ways. Daniel, second chapter, seventh chapter. Soul, hell. Lord's Supper, Baptism, Tongues, Miracles, Trinity, Antichrist, Second Coming. What type of food all these things are? These are all not diluted milk. No, this is a pure, strong meat. Isn't it? Isn't it, brother? Is it meat or is it a full, completely diluted water? Tell me. It's meat, brother. Ah, so the food what we eat is building us up. Daily into Christ. This is the meaning. Two people in one bed, one will be taken to the truth, other will be left in that uh, false only. Now it uh, says in the 17th chapter, other point, what does it say? After two people in the bed, it says two people will be grinding. One will be taken, other left in. What is the meaning of this grinding? Grinding means something which prepares food. You see? So who is the person who grinds? If you see, the person who gives food to somebody else, these are the people who keep on grinding. So who are they, if you see, these are the pastors. Keep on grinding. Every Sunday, keep on grinding. What do they grind? Same thing again and again, again and again. One week, they tell repentance, repentance, you should forgive, you should forgive, turn to God, turn to God. Then next week, judgment, judgment, judgment. Then, Last week, they come to love, 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 love. First week, again, what the uh, tithes, offerings. Why? Uh, first week, they would have got salary. Huh? They want a uh, uh, nice offering. Therefore, keep on uh, grinding the same thing again and again. But some people will be fed up. What is this? From past 10 years, 15 years, I'm doing the same preaching, teaching the same things. No use in this one at all. He will start getting questions. That is the time that uh, one who is desiring, you see, meat, he shall be taken from that grinding place and bring him to the truth. Uh, where the dead body, where the meat in due season is there, there the faithful eagles will be gathered. Now, third point is that two people will be in field, one will be taken, other will have to. 
Now, what is the meaning of field? Huh? Field, Jesus said, the field is the world. The world is the field. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 13, chapter parable. Huh? Now, what is the meaning of this world? See, everybody now working in one own field. See, uh, I am working in accounts field. They are telling, no, which field you are working? Oh, I am working in uh, uh, te technology field, information technology field. I am working in IT field. Huh? Some people are working in uh, battlefield, army. Some people are working in computer field. This is a field. That means uh, they are into various activities in the world. One people will be taken, other will be left means one person who desires uh, to see a good, uh, you see, food uh, in meat in due season, they shall be taken and brought to the tooth, other be left. So God's children should be like eagle. Some people will tell, uh, after listening to the truth, uh, uh, to come in search for the meat, uh, uh, they speculate a lot. Eagle, as soon as they see the meat, it doesn't keep on thinking, shall I go or not? Oh, you, it is very far, pa. How can I go from such a far place to down? Let the meat come to me. Will it happen? No magic and all will happen. God's children should take risks like an eagle. They should come flying very far, though it is very risky. Imagine heavy risk to come from such a place to down and in the midst of everybody, take the meat and go. Eh? But eagle will take the risk. I say it is very sharp. Similarly, God's children should take the risk to eat God's spiritual food day every day. So, nowhere in the Bible, the Bible speaks about rapture. Actually, the word rapture doesn't come, and come even in the Bible, even once also. So, there's no concept of rapture at all. It's all speaking about uh, uh, the Lord's second coming and how the church will be glorified. So, this is the end of uh, the Lord's uh, second coming class. So, still, we got uh, so many portions about uh, how the Lord's uh, uh, kingdom is going to be and how the thousand years reign is going to be. So we will go to see all the things God willing in the coming class. So any doubts, any questions you can ask.